Welcome, people of Centenary, to the very first episode of Leafline, a brand new podcast that will be featuring a rotating lineup of leaders from various areas of Centenary Church. I'm Ben Aquina, the Director of Modern Worship. I'm not sure exactly what I'll be directing this weekend, but I'm here with Associate to the Pastor Brian Ralston. Hi, Brian. Hello, everyone, and hello, Ben. And yes, we know it's a silly name for the podcast, but we're just trying this out and starting out. We're going to make a lot of interesting decisions, so stay with us and enjoy. If you've got a better name for this podcast, by all means, let us know. We're going to be telling you several times during this episode. The best way to reach us with podcast-related stuff is going to be the web address, ugh, email address, centenary1911 at gmail.com. That's the name of the church and then the church address, centenary1911 at gmail.com. Can I get an update? So first off, uh, every week we're going to be bringing you some updates from the world not so much things that you could get on the news but uh, the way that recent developments will be affecting what goes on at centenary church and uh, you're probably already aware that we are not going to be meeting on campus anytime soon all centenary functions and meetings and groups have been postponed including off-campus meetings like the wednesday morning men's breakfast bible study yes and we're calling it suspended because we just need to suspend things right now and don't know how long that'll last but stay tuned but uh, that's everything in the centenary church family official life is currently suspended and we are going to be revisiting those decisions as new uh, information gets brought to light by authorities we're going to do the best we can to constantly be updating you the beloved people of centenary on that and the best place to get all that information will always be centenarychurch.net slash stay healthy that's going to be our most current information all the time so church family uh we just want to remind you to be diligent and to be responsible and to stay on top of things take care of your own health and try to be responsible make good decisions we want everybody to stay healthy as much as possible and during this tough time we want you to stay connected uh, as well. So remember to be the church to each other and remember to check in on each other via phone and email and text and many other ways. Uh, just try to be safe and continue to be diligent. Don't slack off and uh, stay 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 healthy. And uh, yeah, that's all we have to say for this little part. That's kind of awkward, but hey, that's what we're doing. It's a good thing nobody's going to hear this. Good thing nobody's going to hear this. Trivia. So, hello, Centenary. This is Centenary Trivia. Yes, because you can't be here with us, we're going to quiz you about the Centenary Church campus and the Centenary Church family and see how much you can remember from your remote locations all over the Modesto area. So, first, trivia question. How many pianos are on Centenary's church campus? How many pianos? Not keyboards, not organ but pianos. How many pianos are present on the church property? And not the high school room glockenspiel either. Nice try though. No, actual pianos, like full 88 key, normal, well, wonderful pianos. And Jenner Swanson, you're not allowed to play our trivia game, just in case you're listening. Uh, this segment has no spiritual value that I'm aware of, but <laughs> hopefully this will be the kind of thing that you're, you're missing from having during fellowship time on campus. I'm definitely cutting that part out. <laughs> That was pretty lame. Yeah, that was pretty lame. Do you want me to say something there instead of that? Or do you think it's necessary? No, I, I think it was entirely unnecessary. <laughs> and I'm really, really glad we're getting that out. So that's fine. When, where, why, how do you be? It's questions from the community. Okay, and we are on to questions from the community. And if you have a question that you'd like to ask of us and we could uh, discuss it on this podcast, you can send those to, guess what, centenary1911 at gmail.com. And for this very first edition of Questions from the Community, Brian reached out to a few folks to find out what they were curious about. Uh, Brian, why don't you go ahead with that? So I just checked in with a few church family members, and today is Wednesday, the 18th of March, so we're still pretty early on in this. And one church family member asked me, how long do we think the church uh, services and activities will be suspended? How long do we have to be apart and not gathering uh, for worship and other activities? Valid and question. I got to answer, I got to give the answer I love most to give when I'm teaching, which is I don't know. I don't know. That's just the reality of where we're at right now. We don't know how long this will last. We don't know much into the future. And to be all spiritual, God does know. So that's the comforting thing is while we do not know and we're not going to know anytime soon, 
we know that God still knows all of this is in his hands and he knows the future. And so we can trust in that in the meantime. So both a practical and theological answer all in one. And that's the kind of efficiency we give you here on this new podcast. We had a second question. A person asked me uh, about Easter, um, which is April 12th which honestly is not that far away, really. That's four Sundays away. We know we've canceled, uh, suspended the next two Sundays. Uh, I notice I hate saying the word canceled. I just don't like that word when it's applied to church. It's a bad word. When applied to church. I don't like canceling church. But it's uh, just the way it is, and I need to get over that because whether you call it suspended or canceled, it's the same thing. So back to my question. The person asked me about Easter, and once again, I gave my favorite answer. I don't know. Uh, but one thing we did discuss is the reality that Easter should be a celebration for Christians every day of the year, and that be it in March or April or whenever, um, Easter is a celebration for us every day. And so while we're not sure of April 12th here at the church to have an Easter service, we're not uh, aware yet if that's going to be possible or not, uh, we know that we will find ways to celebrate and remember uh, and find joy in the resurrection regardless of what the calendar says. So we're just going to keep you posted on that one. You know, Brian, before we move on, I'd love to take issue with something that you mentioned during that. You you referred to uh, church being canceled or postponed as the same thing, and um, I definitely think it's it's never appropriate. Well, that's not fair. It's never accurate to say that church is canceled. I, I think back to the Church of Acts, who at many times were definitely told by authorities they are not allowed to gather together. That church continued, and thank goodness, because we're still part of that church today. And the Church of Acts, even though they were under very different circumstances, they were discouraged from meeting together. They were told that there is no church, there is no gathering of believers. We're in a sort of a weirdly similar situation to that. Please cut me off and make this make sense somehow, please. So, yeah, uh, what a surprise. Ben Akane is taking issue with something. I'm shocked, first of all, just to get that out. But I'm a contrarian. Second of all, uh, it is a weirdly similar situation, uh, but it's a little different in that we are free to meet. We're being advised it's not safe for our members and our church family to gather, especially those over 65 years old. And so it's an advisory from our, our authorities, and the Bible does also tell us to be uh, in submission to our, our government and our uh, our Christian obligation is to sort of uh, subject ourselves and submit ourselves to the government as much as that is possible. Obviously, the ultimate authority in our lives is God and God's word. And uh, But this situation is more an issue of safety and an issue of protection for our church family and for our communities in which we live. So we believe it's a responsible Christian action to stay in submission to the government and follow the advisors they give us. And it's also protecting our church family and at the same time. So we're not forbidden from, meet, from meeting. We're just being advised to meet in different ways uh, through different Ways methods. that were never available to the Church of Acts. Yes, exactly. We can be so much more connected to each other than that church could be, and I think that's a great blessing and a comfort to us. Yes, it's we a really love... wonderful time to live when we have phone calls and digital methods and texting and emails and Internet and websites. They, they're just available with tons of resources and tons of ways to connect with each other. We just have to use them and not give in to the isolation of staying at home and not reaching out to others or letting others reach out to us. We love gathering together in the same place, but I'm really genuinely excited uh, for the way the definition of church is going to change over the next few months because we are going to be trying new things. We're going to be connecting in new ways. I think it's going to be very cool. So that's community or questions from the community for today. Um, please, if you've got things that you're curious about that you would like to hear discussed on this podcast, as always, send those to centenary1911 at gmail.com. Yeah, Brian, the, those, those answers uh, kind of transition us really well into our main topic for the day. Would you mind talking about that a little? Main topic. So as we were talking uh, that... We're kind of excited. Ben and I are both uh, in this weird place of being excited about some opportunities because of this current situation. And so what it caused me to think about in the last couple of days was I think far too often we view a problem, uh, this current crisis we're in, we view it very, very negatively and it, it really discourages us and scares us and causes a lot of strong emotions. And those need to be dealt with and talked about and processed, taken to the Lord, prayed about. But I think sometimes we, we get stuck there and we just sort of 
focus on the problem a lot, and myself included, I've gotten myself into tied in some knots sometimes by just focusing on the problem. And I think what can be very helpful is if we trust the Lord to help us, I think we can change our perspective. And you can, you can view a problem not as a problem, but as an opportunity. Because what this current situation is forcing us to do is take advantage of some interesting opportunities that are presented to us. We cannot gather for worship. We cannot gather for Bible studies. And we cannot even gather in small groups right now. But we have opportunities because of that to try new things out, to try new technology out, to really do things a little differently. And we may discover that some of these ways are very helpful and very encouraging, especially for some that may not be able to come as often as they used to or through health challenges or other reasons aren't able to be here on a regular basis. There might be new options provided that are amazing uh, opportunities for us to connect digitally and connect in other ways and do church differently. We're still going to be the church, and I think that's very important regardless of our situation, but I think we can start to do church a little differently. So that's a perspective change. It's a very difficult one to maintain because inevitably the anxiety, the worry, the news, it all starts creeping back in. Uh, so part of what we want to discuss a little bit later is sort of some helpful hints on how to keep your perspective change uh, from slipping away. But I think for now, we just got to start with, we have to view this differently. And the old expression, the old cliche comes to mind, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. So we're all just going to be making and drinking a whole lot of lemonade around here. And it's kind of weirdly exciting. So God may be doing something new in the midst of this. And as always, God is constantly working all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose and plans. And I think this might be a time when we, the church, need to look at that, uh, that pro the way the world views it as a problem, we need to view it as an opportunity. And I think there's so much uh, biblical foundational knowledge that kind of rejects this thing of out of comfort comes growth. Um, and, and of course, uh, what we're just, you know, People being deprived of their church meetings, um, some of them having uh, grown dependent on those church meetings, had wonderful memories and built wonderful relationships out of meeting in, in person. That is, of course, traumatic, and we don't wish to make light of that. But it's it's also, I, I come back to this thing of, I, I look at people throughout the entire canon of Scripture. I think about uh, the book of Judges. I think about uh, the church of Acts and how so often difficult situations, difficult times made people be so much more dependent on God. Um, God's power being perfected in weakness. I think this is a time where it's so healthy not to lament what has been lost, uh, but to really cling to God instead. Uh, I, a lot of us will have more free time right now, unfortunately. That's a lot more time that can be devoted to time in the Word. What are you... Doing about the sirens? Oh, it's okay. They it's know. centenary. There's yeah. always sirens. So of course there's sirens in the background. You probably feel like you're at church right now them. if you yeah, can hear those say, sirens. If you didn't hear those sirens, uh, that's what just went by. So, But Ben's exactly right. There are so many examples in Scripture of where the world saw a problem, Jesus saw an opportunity. And where the blind man on the road, uh, Jesus saw that as an opportunity to show God's glory and to let God's glory be shown through that man's weakness and that man's disability. And Jesus healed him. And through that whole chapter 9 of John, uh, Jesus is being given much glory and the blind man is proclaiming him to be Messiah and Lord and in some pretty amazing ways. And that problem turned into an opportunity. And by the end of it, not only did the man come to faith, but we don't know how many others may have. Over and over again, you see that in Scripture. God taking what the world would view as a problem and turning it into opportunities. Um, Think about um, the Apostle John, uh, the letters that he was writing in the book of Revelation. All the churches that the outside world would have looked at and said, wow, things must be going very well for you. God really seems to be blessing you. Uh, he was just very fed up with those churches. That's the, the passage where he refers to them being lukewarm and that God would spit them out of his mouth. Um, on the other hand, uh, his messages to the poor churches, to the struggling churches. I mean, in the book of Acts, we see those churches are the ones that are most often just completely on fire and eager and enthusiastic about what God is doing in their lives. I think that same opportunity is before us, and I'm, I'm thrilled about that. Yeah, it, but it's going to take some discipline to maintain that thrilled status as the reality sinks in sometimes. 
I think we have to constantly be checking our perspective and going back to the Word of God and asking the Spirit of God to help us and empower us because our our nature, our sin nature, is going to drag us back into anxiety, into worry, into passivity. We need to reject that, and we need to trust the Lord enough to say, okay, Lord, help me to see this as an opportunity. And maybe it's an opportunity to get some things done around the house. Maybe it's an opportunity to get those jobs done I've always been avoiding. Maybe it's an opportunity to reach out to my neighbors that I've never really had a chance to share with before, but now I can offer them some help, or I could at least check in on them and phone call them maybe and just see if they're okay. Uh, This is the opportunity that we can take advantage of here at the church to do things a little differently, but it's also the opportunity for all of us to be the church and reach out to our neighbors, our friends, our family. And just in my phone calls today, I've heard some very encouraging stories of centenary folks who are already starting to do that, uh, reaching out to people uh, and and offering help and just trying to shine the light into a lot of darkness. Because right now there's a lot of worries, a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty, and we're all struggling with that, and so are our neighbors, and so are our friends and family. And there's a lot of tough situations that sometimes if you just offer a listening ear or a helpful hand, sometimes that can make a huge difference. And I think this is a season of opportunity, unlike what the church has seen recently. And I think by the, you know, by the time we get through this, we'll see God has really worked and moved in some pretty significant ways. We want to be a part of that. So in order to be a part of that, we have to check our strong emotions, our very strong, understandable emotions. We need to work through those, the grieving uh, of being together, the, the anger, the frustration, the confusion, the anxiety, and the fear. We need to take all those to the Lord and talk about them with each other and be transparent and open about that and move through those and see what opportunities God's going to give us on the other side. Not get stuck in those strong emotions, but move through them and see what Jesus will do, see what the Lord will do through us. Brian, I think that is some fantastic food for thought, and I think that brings us to our next segment. Uh, We already did questions from the community. Welcome to questions for the community. Think about it, talk about it, get back to me with this question for the community. We want this podcast to be a truly interactive experience for Centenary Church, and we are very interested in hearing your perspectives on these ongoing conversations that we're going to be happening. And this is very much in light of what Brian just mentioned. Our question for the community this week is, how can you, and I'm not speaking in the general you, I want to know about you individually by name, how can you in your individual life be a witness for Christ right now? This is something we'd love to hear from you at centenary1911 at gmail.com. We'd love for you to discuss this amongst yourselves. Uh, Many of you are going to be missing the the small group uh, atmospheres that you've had in various groups here at church. Um, We want those to continue over the telephone, over email. So talk to each other and ask each other that question. Seriously, what can you in in your individual life do to be a witness for Christ right now? We'd also love to hear your thoughts about that if you're connected to us on Facebook Lindy Collins is going to be uh, putting a post on the church Facebook page of that very very same question and we'd love for you guys to have some sort of an ongoing conversation there about that but we definitely want to hear from you uh, directly via email so that we can um, include your responses and your thoughts in our discussion next week hey Ben can you give the email address just one more time holy cow we haven't heard it enough yet I'm sorry centenary should I spell it out to make it longer no. Sorry. Centenary1911 at gmail.com. That's fantastic. <laughs> See, even I can do it. You might be able to listen to this podcast but not have email access. So if that's you, you can actually leave a voicemail on the Centenary uh, Church main line. Uh, this area code, 209-527-5441. If you uh, want to connect with us that way and share your thoughts that we can uh, share on the podcast next week. One last word before we go. So that's it for our first attempt at a podcast here. Uh, LeafLine was brought to you by the fine efforts and work ethic of Ben Aquino. So respond to us. Let us know that you're listening so we know to keep doing this. And meanwhile, we're going to transition now to our closing statements, which will just give you a final few details on where you should be going and what you should be doing. Hopefully you saw Pastor Bob's very first uh, video devotional, one of many that we're going to be uh, distributing over the next 
few weeks and possibly months. One of the things that he mentioned is we are still, even though we're not able to meet on weekends, we are still dependent on your faithful giving. You can still mail those in with a stamp and an envelope if you need to. Uh, truly one of the easiest ways to do that is by visiting centenarychurch.net slash giving because there's three fantastic options. All very simple. You could choose your best method and it's the, the best and most consistent way uh, to make sure you're still giving faithfully because uh, we still depend on, on that. Yes. Um, and while you're on the website, please... Uh, take note of two new pages that we've possibly already mentioned in this episode, centenarychurch.net slash stay healthy. Uh, no spaces and no punctuation and stay healthy. And that is the place where you're going to get the most up-to-date information about what the government bodies have decided and how that affects our meetings here on campus. And until we can meet on campus again, we're going to constantly be uploading new content to centenarychurch.net slash stay at home. No, not that. Centenarychurch.net slash church at home. Three words, no spaces, no punctuation. Church at home. Uh, Pastor Bob's first video devotional is going to be on there, and that video devotional is going to have a bunch of little video devotional friends in the next few weeks. Uh, there's several music options on there for both of the worship styles that we have here at this church. We're going to be posting links to this podcast and other podcast episodes. We are going to be very eagerly finding more content to put on there to try and uh, continue this uh, this church. Can't meet in person, but we're going to keep finding alternatives. So in the meantime, please, folks at home, be reaching out to each other in whatever ways you can. Keep this church I'm not going to say alive because that sounds awful. But keep this church Connected. active and eager and on fire. Turns out I could have managed to do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and probably done a better but, job. Is that what you're saying? Better than... <laughs> I accept it. Stay at home. <laughs> Centenarychurch.net slash stay at stay home. home. Centenarychurch.net slash be afraid. Be that, very afraid. That was our old 9 o'clock service when the time change happened. We told people to stay at home. Good. All right. Wow. Now I'm not alone in the bad joke club. Can Thank you, you. Can you cut and paste this together? Oh, no. Now? This is all going in. Okay, good. And we want to leave you today with uh, the words of probably Solomon, whoever wrote Proverbs chapter 3, uh, reading verses 5 and 6 in the New Living Translation. And uh, please keep these words in your heart and mind over the course of this next week until we get to be back with you again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. So thanks everyone for checking this out and listening. Please let us know that you listened and uh, via those fun email addresses or drop us a phone call or however you can get a hold of us. Let us know you're out there and that you want us to get better at this because we're sure going to try and we want to know that you, this is helpful in some way. So keep in touch with us, stay healthy and stay connected to each other and most importantly, stay connected to the Lord. Brian Ralston, checking out. Bye-bye.